There we go. There's double double. There we go. Me and Deacon. I was thinking, you might be thinking, boy, Deacon Art looks a lot younger all of a sudden. Yeah, but there's Deacon Tim with us. But today we have this chance has been mentioned a couple times already that this is our feast day. But this, for, for those of you who haven't, uh, who are new here, like myself, I've only been here for a year. This is my first feast day with the parish. This just seems normal. It's the Holy Trinity. You know, sol- solemnity, so this is our parish, Holy Trinity Parish Feast Day. But for those of you who've been here for longer than if, for many years, this is just some adjusting to get used to, right? Because for so long now, it's been either like August 4th for St. John Vianney was the feast day, or October 4th for St. Francis Parish in Mount Eniac, or whether it was January 4th for St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, you know, and here we are at 4 Beaver Bank Road, lots of fours going on, you know, but we have... but. And those are great, you know, saints to, to, to have as patrons and feast days, but now it's like some adjustment to, oh, Holy Trinity feast day, but what a great feast day to have. It's actually kind of a unique one because it moves a lot. It's kind of like elusive. It's like one year it'll be, you know, like today, May 26th, the next year it'll be some other time, you know, depending on when Easter falls. But it's a, but it's a great feast day theologically and spiritually for us because it's rich and it's close to our, our hearts as a parish, because our parish mission statement is to, you know, we really want to be people who make and equip disciples who joyfully go and bring others to Jesus. And so this idea of making and equipping disciples, that we are the disciples of the Lord today. And so when we hear the gospel on the Feast of the Holy Trinity, what do we hear? We say Jesus saying to all the peoples, and often it's called the Great Commission, you know, this Matthew 28, where it says, go and make disciples, hmm, sounds familiar, make disciples, you know? go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Hmm, sounds like the Trinity, right? You know, so here we are on the feast day, Holy Trinity, and it's right at the heart, the message of the Gospels, right at the heart of our very mission as Holy Trinity Parish, that we want to be disciples and part of being disciples, an interesting feature of Jesus' great commission is he says, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit. So there's something about this reality, the fullness of God's identity, of the fullness of his revelation as a triune God that's part of being a disciple. Now, for a lot of us, the doctrine or the theology of the Holy Trinity is a big head scratcher. I was like, whoa, okay. So I'm about to give now a nice 10 minute dissertation on the Trinity. So get ready. No, I'm, no, no way, right? That's like, but what, what I want to do though is I want to, you know, I think for us, this is, this is our lived reality for us. It's not a doctrine only, right? The Trinity is a relationship, it's God, right? It's, and so for us as disciples, as, especially as parishioners of Holy Trinity, how do we make sure that we get in touch with the persons of the Trinity in a special way? You know, it's meaningful to us. It's a lived reality, not a doctrine merely. Right? And so what I mean by that is, as St. Paul teaches about the Spirit of God is within us crying out, Abba, Father, right? We have this reality within us where God is now our Father. We are brothers and sisters, and God is our Dad, right? And it's great how Jesus teaches us to call God Daddy. It's not like we get up in the morning and say, good morning, Father, you know, good morning, Mother. You know, good morning. It's, like, it's, like, it's like, hey, Dad, you know, it's that intimacy with God, right? to, to love up on God the Father. We, at the core of our identity, we are sons and daughters of a loving Dad, a loving Father. And what a beautiful reality that is, would that we could live out of that reality more and more and come to trust it. With, with God being our Father, being our Dad, what that means for me is that he's bigger than any problems. He's bigger than everything else, you know? And so I can be a child, even as an adult. I can be a child with a, and turn to dad and sit up on his lap and, you know, listen to his heart and just kind of just be like, okay, you're bigger than all this stuff, Lord. Help me out, dad. You know, and it's such a beautiful reality for us as disciples that we can call God our dad. I remember as a child, you know, playing with one of my neighborhood friends and we were sort of comparing dads. You know, he's a, in my, my dad, he, he knew how to do lots of neat little magic tricks and stuff. So my f- friend Ben was saying, yeah, my dad, he was able to fix the, the truck the other day. He, can, he knows how to do all that cool stuff. So go, oh, yeah? Well, my dad can pull quarters out of my ear, you know? And we're comparing our dads to each other. 
I guess I had visions of being very rich with all these quarters coming out of my ear. But, uh, but we were, uh, it's like, God, well, we can boast of a great dad, us. God is our dad. Whoa. And so why is it sometimes that we're so worried or so afraid at times that life gets tough? Life has some very difficult ups and downs. But as Christians, may we never forget that our dad is bigger than all that stuff. He, in the end, will pull it all together if we trust in him, if we love him, we turn to him. And when I think of Jesus, the son, right, he's for us, you know, that human reality, that human revelation of God. He's the word who became flesh, the incarnate one, Emmanuel. God is with us, right? God becomes one of us so that we can become one with him. Right? So what an amazing reality of Jesus, the second person of the Trinity, right? That we could tap into this and that God doesn't become merely just a, a first, like a prime mover or like a first cause or just some force out there, you know, it, that Jesus has a face. Jesus has a heart that beats for us and even bleeds for us, right? That he was able to die for our sins and to rise again in victory and to save us. Right? He's our Savior. He has, he's got the, the scars on his hands and feet and side to show us how, the depth of love, that, how much we are loved. So this, this idea of God drawing close to us, how close God is to us. That this intimacy. I remember as a boy, it was easy to relate to God, especially with Jesus, because I could kind of just imagine myself holding his hand and, or talking to him, you know, or you can almost imagine feeling his beard, you know, or just hearing his voice. Just Jesus being so real. He's like us in all things but sin. So with that, we can always feel that God can identify us, even in our sufferings. That this is a, we can have an intimacy and a closeness to God because of Jesus and his humanity. Right? Wow, what a beautiful God we love and serve. We've got a dad, you know, bigger than all our problems. We have the word made flesh in Jesus Christ, this human face, this loving reality for us that God is not far away, but close. So if we're ever feeling distant from God, may we always turn to Jesus. How can we look at his face and our hearts not melt? How can we not look at him with his arms outstretched on the cross and not feel the love of his mercy and the power of his sacrifice for us? And then we have Jesus and the Father sending us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit dwelling within us. I love that reality. This idea that God's not only with us, he's within us. We're temples of the Holy Spirit. Wow. That God is within me. It's like discovering like the comic books or Marvel movies that you see growing. You know that, that we also like we have a superpower. It's like we realize we've been bitten by a radioactive spider or we've come from Krypton or something, you know? Like there's all, we realize, like, wow, I have, the, I have the Holy Spirit within me. Woohoo! We, don't like a, we could feel like I could fly, you know? But the thing is, with this reality of the Holy Spirit, it's the idea that God is able to uh, do extraordinary things with the ordinary things that we do. He's able to magnify our efforts in a powerful way like the Jesus multiplied the fish and loaves that were offered. That if we just offer somebody a smile or a kind word or a helpful hand or we pray for people or whatever things we're doing, you know, cleaning up after somebody, whatever it is, like forgiving somebody, all these things that we do, these efforts we make to love one another, the Holy Spirit within us is able to amplify it and give it a lot more of an effect than we can do just on our own. The Holy Spirit has given all of us different gifts that Father Eve spoke about last week so beautifully and how we can explore these gifts and, and discover you know, the way that God wants to use each of us in our own unique way. But it's all through the power of the Holy Spirit within us. So we, yes, have a great big dad who's bigger than everything. We got Jesus, that human face, that loving reality, that merciful Lord. And then we have within us the Holy Spirit empowering all that we do and amplifying what we do in ways that, you know, are so exciting and marvelous. So what an amazing God that we serve. So as disciples, we need to be entrenched in these relationships. We need to be living out of this reality so that we're not walking in fear or anxiety, not walking aimlessly, not knowing how to, to follow, right? not not feeling that we don't have anything to offer, but knowing the gifts of the Spirit within us, that we can, we have something to do, right? So we want to be made and equipped as disciples, right? So that we can go and bring others to Jesus. The Holy Trinity is a lived reality. And so my desire for us 
uh, this week is that we can maybe take some time in prayer to, to maybe explore our relationship with God and all the three persons of the Trinity, that we can maybe focus on maybe the one person of the Holy Trinity that is the most underdeveloped relationship in our life. You know, that maybe for some of us, we have trouble relating to God as Father, because, you know, um, for various reasons. And it's good to press in on that and explore that and to pray for the grace to rediscover spiritual childhood, like St. Therese, the little flower, right? Or to find ways to, to trust in our God who's bigger than everything. Maybe we need to develop our relationship with Jesus, to, to look to him, to, to be willing to follow all that he teaches. He has a lot to share with us from the heart of the Father, you know, about how to live our life, you know, what to do, and to be, allow him to challenge us. To maybe we struggle with that because we don't, you know, we, we find it, it's too close to home. We don't like the sufferings and the cross and all that stuff that he's, he models for us and asks us to follow him. And we need to develop that relationship, that trust in Jesus to know that he really is our good shepherd leading us to heaven. Maybe we need to work on our relationship with the Holy Spirit to just take some extra time to explore and discover, like, yeah, Lord, what gifts have you given me? Or how can I come to know you more? How can I allow you to flow and work through me in ways that maybe I haven't allowed you to as yet? So as you can see, whatever one of those three examples I gave to you that resonate in your heart, we can explore that throughout the week and and in our prayers, ask God to, to strengthen our relationship with, with him so that we can grow as disciples and uh, bring others to Jesus. Amen.